Hi folks, Astronomy Live here. This is a follow-up to my previous video covering Asteroid 2018 VP1. If you haven't already seen it, please go check it out. I covered the basics of this asteroid and calculated the region of uncertainty and found that indeed there is a small but non-zero chance of an impact with Earth in November of this year. The asteroid's very small, just a few feet wide, so even if it hits, it won't really do any damage down below. But I thought it was interesting because it gave us an opportunity to calculate a possible impact and figure out how we can map out where that's going to be on Earth if it were to occur. And what we got was this picture you see here. And as you can see, the most likely impact location would be the Pacific Ocean. So even if it hits, not only is it too small to do any damage, but odds are no one would even see it because it would probably be somewhere way out over the Pacific. But it is still an interesting opportunity to study a possible impactor. And there are claims going around that this asteroid could be much larger than what NASA is saying. In fact, one report was that this asteroid is actually six miles wide instead of six feet wide. But that is a claim that we can directly address and refute because we can take the orbits that result in these impacts and take a look at where we would have to look in the sky to see that asteroid if it were actually on an impact course for Earth. The total region of uncertainty of this asteroid is quite large. We would have to search a huge portion of the sky to be able to recover it. And with just one telescope as an amateur, uh, I'm not really going to have the resources to realistically be able to do that. There are also difficulties in the geometry of how it's approaching Earth. However, if we narrow it down to just the region of uncertainty that corresponds with impact, and we use telescopes on the iTelescope network to expand our reach, we can actually study this and find out if there really is a six mile wide asteroid on an impact course for Earth consistent with 2018 VP1. So as I covered in my previous video, we were able to narrow down the region of uncertainty to just the portion that corresponds with the potential impact with Earth. And this narrows it down to less than one degree of sky, which is much easier to cover with an amateur telescope. In fact, even using the large half meter aperture T31 telescope on the iTelescope network, I was able to cover this entire region of the sky in just one frame. And by taking multiple images over a 15 minute period, I was able to determine whether or not the asteroid was there because within a 15 minute period, you would get a little bit of motion of this line relative to the background stars. Now, if the asteroid really is just a few feet wide, we're looking at something that would be far too dim to observe with an amateur telescope or even a professional telescope, something in excess of magnitude 30. However, if it were six miles wide, for example, we would be dealing with an object that is about magnitude 13 and a half. Even if it's very dim and very non-reflective, it would still be so large that it would reflect enough of the sun's light to easily be observable to an amateur telescope, especially one as powerful as the T31 telescope. So with that in mind, I was able to take these images in order to potentially rule out or confirm the existence of a six mile wide asteroid barreling towards us. So let's now take a look at those images and see what we find. So here are the images that I took with the telescope in Australia on September 15th. I overlaid a green line that corresponds to the coordinates of the region of uncertainty that we just looked at in the sky chart. And you can see that the telescope is able to completely cover that region and then some on either side. But what I'm not seeing is any indication of an asteroid moving relative to the background stars. The telescope was set to track based on the orbit of the center of the line. And so the asteroid should remain relatively fixed in the images, but you can see that the stars are moving in the background. Now let me zoom in on that region and get that green line out of the way. You can see some individual pixels that are fixed throughout the images, but these are just hot pixels. They don't form point spread functions the way stars and asteroids do, true sources of light in the image. They will tend to fall off in brightness towards their edges, but that's not what hot pixels do. These are just defective pixels scattered around the CCD, and that's quite normal. But we're not seeing any indication here of an asteroid moving relative to the background stars. Even if I use histogram equalization to look at these images all the way down to the noise level, I still don't find anything consistent with an asteroid traveling along the orbit of 2018 VP1 if it really is going to hit Earth. 
However, that doesn't necessarily mean an Earth impact won't happen, because of course, 2018 VP1 is supposed to be just a few feet wide, far too dim to detect in these images. But it does rule out the possibility of a six mile wide asteroid. Such an asteroid would be significantly brighter than many of the dim stars you see in this image. Now you may be wondering just how dim an asteroid you could detect with these images. Well, last night I used another 20 inch plane wave telescope. This is T11 on the iTelescope network, and it's located in New Mexico. It's the same size as the telescope that I used in Australia. And I used it to take these images of asteroid 2020 SW. Now at the time I took these images, that asteroid was around magnitude 19.5. That means that a six mile wide asteroid, if that's what 2018 VP1 really was, would be 10 to 20 times too large to escape detection in the images that I took. So we can definitely rule that out. 2020 SW, on the other hand, will be continuing to increase in brightness over the next couple of days as it approaches Earth. It will reach closest approach on Thursday, but Wednesday night will present the best opportunity for me to see it. In fact, it will get bright enough for my 8-inch telescope to be able to detect it, and that means I can webcast it live for you all if the weather allows me to. So that's the plan. Tomorrow night I will be attempting to track and webcast asteroid 2020 SW. It's another very small asteroid, just a few meters in diameter, but it's getting closer to Earth than some of our own satellites, so it will be detectable to my telescope. So tune in for that tomorrow night. That's it for this video. Thanks for watching, and until next time, clear skies, folks.